So welcome back to the video lectures of image and speech processing uh, techniques, right? So in the previous class, we have talked about what are the pixels, what is the image processing, basics of image processing, what is a digital image, what is sampling, what is quantization, what are the uh, neighbors, adjacency. So in today's video's lecture, we will be talking about the image enhancement techniques. So uh, before we go that, let me just talk about one more concept called as the pixel in pixel relationships, which is the distance measures, right? So, what is this distance measures? As we have said uh, in our video previous video lecture, we have seen that if I have a pixel three cross three image, then if I am considering a pixel which is at the center, then the vertical and my horizontals are called as my four neighbors. Right? So, they are the four neighbors and the diagonal elements are called as the diagonal neighbors. Right? This is the pixel of my interest. Right? So, let me just use it. So, the pixel of my interest is x comma y. Then, I have four neighbors which are the horizontal and the vertical and diagonal neighbors which are the four diagonal elements. Right? Combinedly, this n4 and n diagonal elements combinedly are called as the eight neighbors right now what we have next uh, talked about was the adjacency if i am seeing this pixel and say suppose i have another pixel these two pixels are to be adjacent to each other then i am supposed to uh, then i have to say that this and this pixel are actually first condition to be satisfied as neighbors. So since these two are not neighbors, I cannot say that these two are adjacent. So when we come here, the adjacent neighbors are of these neighbors, right? So first condition for the adjacency to be, to be existed between two pixels is they should be neighbors. Next is if you are considering the intensity values uh, of all the pixels of our interest here, neighbors pixels, then all the intensity values here whatever the pixels 3 cross 3, 8 neighbors and 4 neighbors we are considering, they should all belong to the same subset of the intensity values. We have seen that if we have a binary image, then the possible subsets are 0 or 1, right? For the gray image, we have the possible sets to be 1. Uh, say suppose for we have for gray image we have these sets from 0 to 255 so for example we have taken 1 2 3 so 1 till 10 and we have checked whether uh, the pixels adjacent the neighbors which are adjacent are belonging to the same intensity subset or not so based on that we have taken a decision whether they are adjacent or not right so next the part next important pa part we have to talk about in pixels relationships is path existence right path and the distance right so here we have three types of uh, distances that we can or distance measurements that is the euclidean distance city block distance chessboard and m distance right now what is happening here is if we are calculating the distance measure then we are assuming few conditions which are the distance at the my required pixel which is p of q p comma q which is always greater than or equal to zero right if p and q they are both pixels are same say suppose let me just erase this here okay i have a image here okay this is my pixel p this is my pixel q right so the distance between this p pixel and q pixel should be always greater than or equal to zero if the distance is zero then we say that p and q are both the same pixels values right so it is always a positive value which cannot be negative right now the other condition is that the distance from the p pixel to q pixel as well as the distance from q to p pixels are same they, they it is not like the direction specific it is not it is a scalar vector, scalar value not a vector value right now say suppose let me just here arrange this yeah so say suppose i am taking a intermediate uh, pixel value which is pixel position which is s okay then the distance from p to q can be less than or equal to the summation of p plus q q plus s right so it can be equal or it can be lesser so 
if you have consecutive pixels where you have to calculate, then you can take the distance from this pixel to pixel, this pixel to pixel, then. Okay, so if we are having the distance from one pixel to other pixel, if you don't have the distance, we can go through the adjacency and we can create a path, right? So for that, the distance measures can be done. Okay, so the, what are the three types of distance measures are Euclidean distance, block, uh, block distance, then we have the chessboard distance, then we have the M, M distance, right? Now, what is the Euclidean distance is, we are going to calculate the, like in our Cartesian plane, we are going to calculate the distance between this and this two uh, points. How do we calculate? We calculate the x-axis is equals 1, 2. So, we get it there is to be 1 square plus 2 square, 4 square, right? So, this kind of uh, distance measurement we have done in Cartesian product. So, the similarly, we are going to do it in the same image processing also where the origin will be at the center, uh, at the leftmost corner, uh, top point. So, from there, we are going to measure the Euclidean distance in this form and uh, we are going to say that so the pixel from P and Q, it is at so and so distance, right? Apart from that, we can say the distance can be measured using the city blocks. What does that mean is, if I have a pixel, I will consider only the four neighbors, right? So, I will say the distance from, say suppose, I will say the distance from this pixel, which is zero, is all is less than or equal to two. Less than or equal to two. Okay, so what do I do is let let's first go for first. So what is from my image? What is my less than or equal to one means? I will have my four neighbors. So I will have here one. This is distance one. Distance pixel one, which is the distance one. This is the pixel one. So this is in the form of a diamond shape, right? So if I say the distance is less than or equal to 2, then I go for the next row, which is given by 2, 2, 2 here as shown here. So, if you see that the city block distance is in the form of a diamond shape and it is always considering the four neighbors of this pixel, right? We are first going to consider the four neighbors, then after that we are going to go for the next four neighbors. So, this city block distance will give you my four neighbors distance. Right. Let's go for the chest board distance. What is this chest board means? The example here, it is shown here. Right. For city block, we have shown it in this form. So, if you observe here, the city block is in the form of a diamond shape and whereas the chest board form is in the form of a square shape. So, what are we considering here? We are considering the eight uh, eight neighbors, right? So, if I consider the zero and if I say the chessboard distance is less than or equal to one. So, what do I do is I consider the four neighbors as well as my diagonal neighbors, right? So, the distance is always less than or equal to one. So, such kind of a eight neighbors I am considering means such kind of arrangement we get the chessboard distance, right? So, this is called as the chessboard distance calculation. This is your city block distance including uh, Euclidean distance. What is it uh, M distance means? Uh, if I am having the M adjacency between P and Q, then I, the distance measured using this uh, adjacency is called as your M distance, right? The next part or the next important part in your pixels relationship is path. So, what is your path means? If P and path P and Q, if I have two pixels which is P and Q, then the path exists between those two. If the sequence of the pixels in between, okay, they are all adjacent to each other. Okay, say suppose I have pixels. I have a pixel P here and here say suppose I have the pixel Q. Okay, so if I have to say a path exists between P and Q of this sort or it is in this sort or it is in this sort. Okay, three possible ways or many other ways. For here I am just considering these three possible ways. Then the all the intermediate pixels which are here Right, so all these intermediate pixels should be adjacent to P 
P should be adjacent to this pixel, this pixel should be adjacent to this pixel, this pixel should be adjacent to this pixel, so on and so forth. So if these pixels are adjacent to each other and they are adjacent to P and Q, then only a path exists. If say suppose P it is adjacent, we have the adjacency existing. If say suppose this pixel is not adjacent, it is not an adjacent value is not a adjacent value then this path cannot exist okay we will have the other paths so for the foremost condition for a path to exist is they have to be the intermediate distinct pixels which we are going to consider between the pixels p and q they should be adjacent to each other right so this is called as the path existence. So, what is your length of the path is the number of pixels that we are going to pass through for shifting for going from P and Q that is called as your length of your path. Okay. If S is representing the subset of pixels in an image, then the pixels P and Q are said to be connected if S is in, exists in the path. Okay. Now, if I am saying that if I have a pixel. If I have a subset of the pixels, then if P and Q are connected, P and Q are said to be connected, okay, that means a path exists between those two only if all the pixels which are existing as the intermediate pixels, they are existed in the subset which is your S, okay, which is the subset of the pixels in your image, right? Now, if any pixel P, if the sets of pixels that are connected to S are called as the components, connected components of S. So, for a pixel P, if we are considering a pixel P as my starting point, then all the pixels in the S, where they are a subset of the pixels and they are connected, then it is called as the connected component of the S. So, rest of the pixels which are not a subset, which are subset of S, but they are not connected to the region P and Q in between this P and Q, they are called as the non-connected components of the S. Right? Now, now, let's go to the next topic, which is the image enhancement techniques. So, what are we trying to do is, we are having a pixel, we have going, we are having an image which are having like m cross n number of pixels. Right? So, if it has m cross m and each pixel value is having some intensity value, say suppose for an image I am saying to be r. Okay, this pixel intensity value should be enhanced okay so there are different methods by which we can do one such thing that we are going to do in the spatial domain process is called as the intensity transforms and that can be represented in the form of this form uh, by this equation where f of x comma y is the input image we are doing some operations t on the input image such that we are getting a improved or the in enhanced image which is represented by g of x comma y. So, if you see clearly the size of f of x comma y and the size of g of x comma y, there is no change. We are just doing mathematical manipulations on each pixel value, right? So, if I am considering a, a pixel, okay, this is the pixel which I am considering or subset I am considering and this is the pixel of interest then the small region shown is the neighborhood okay this is the neighborhood as we have shown here <coughs> the smallest possible is the size which is one cross one right so if the filter is say suppose we are just considering the pixel value as it is then it is the one cross one when the neighborhood of one is considered as one cross one the g or the g of x comma y value is dependent only on the value of f of of x comma y right mm -hmm. so this at the single point right so this t is called as the intensity transforms right so what is intensity transforms means each pixel value is manipulated so for mm -hmm. that kind of manipulations is called as the intens intensity transforms and also the important point is the value whatever we do doing the operations is all the in the output image it will be dependent only on the operation as well as the individual pixel value not on the neighborhood right so that can be that we are representing in this form what does this means if r is the input uh, r is the input intensity value at x comma y 
then s is the output at output intensity value at x comma y so we are doing the intensity transforms right so there are different methods by which an intensity transform can be performed which is also called as the point to point intensity transform okay it can be like called as the contrast stretching or threshold what do you mean by contrast stretching is i have a image which is i'm drawing a graph where i have the range of the intensity values r okay now these are the on my y axis i have the possible output intensity values on my x axis i have my input intensity values now what is happening here is i am doing some operations in such a way that my intensity values are stretched out we are doing a stretching operation what does that mean is the dark the dark pixel values i mean the low intensity values are left as it is whereas if they are some uh, contrasted image the image pixel values intensity values are small that we are stretching them we are doing some manipulation so that they are increased which is can be seen here right so if my intensity value which is here say suppose 10 here we are doing some manipulations and doing some 20 so we are doing this contrast stretching in such a way that there is observed as a contrast stretching now what is thresholding is i have a threshold value which is k i am saying that if my input intensity value is uh, less than or equal to k then the output s value will be zero okay if the intensity value r is greater than or equal to k then only s is equal to say suppose l okay so what am i doing i'm creating a binary image based on the threshold right so need not be a binary image which is 0 and 1 i can create a gray image which is having only two intensity values where below the intensity value of the k i have the all uh, int output intensity values to be some constant which uh, which is a constant zero and the intensity values above the k i'm having the intensity value output into intensity value to be x right so there are three more basic uh, intensity uh, transform techniques in the uh, contrast stretching okay so in contrast stretching i'll have my linear logarithmic and power okay what is this linear logarithmic power is yes, we are doing a linear operations on our input image intensity values where uh, the operations that we are considering are to be linear so there are two types of linear again in that so one is the identity identity operation the other is the image negative operation so the identity function means the it is a basic condition or the ideal condition where the input and output intensities are identical so that means if r is existing then my output value is also s which is equal to s so if i consider this which is s is equal to t of r this is the intensity transform mathematical equation for this identity value i can write s is equal to r right next if we go for image negative what is my image negative is the negative of the image means the intensity values are ranging between 0 to l minus 1 then the negative transformation is obtained the negative transformation is obtained in such a way that the zero is given to the highest magnitude and the ma highest magnitude is given to zero so that i can transform i can write it in this form of a mathematical form as s is equal to l minus 1 minus r right so if i just draw a graph of these identity and in image negative then what do i get is this is i just draw this r and this is the s so on x axis i'm considering the input intensity values which is r on the y axis output so if s is equal to r function this is my identity the uh, intensity transform and the image negative value is given by here l minus 1 and this is zero right so this is my uh, s is equal to l minus 1 minus r so this is my negative image negative right the next form of uh, image intensity value is your logarithmic where the s is converted uh, s is obtained from r which is converted using a logarithmic function so this is a 
logarithmic function where the general form is given. Here c is any constant and it differs from application to application. Now what is the advantage of going here is the narrow range of the intensity values are mapped to the wider range of the output values. So if I have a low contrast image, I have a low contrast image using a logarithmic function, I can convert into a high contrast pixel value. Okay, so what are we doing? We are doing an image enhancement by converting this low contrast image to a high contrast image. Now, the other thing what are we doing here is this transformation is used for expanding values of the dark pixels in the image, right? So when we are converting this nano range means the dark pixel values in the image are broadened, they are expanded and we are also compressing the high level values. How are we compressing is this logarithmic value at high value, it is a small value. Say suppose log of 10, it is 1, right? Log of 100, it is 2, right? If you take in the base of 10, then the log of 100 is 2. So the where is 100 and where is 2? So what is happening? The high value is also compressed to a smaller value, right? So what is happening is we are able to even achieve a compression here. So higher values are also compressed. Similarly, we have the anti-log, which is the inverse log intensity transform, right? And it will perform the exact opposite operation on the like so what is happening here if we have a dark uh, contrast images we are trying to enhance it more the narrow images are further reduced right so the exact operation of my uh, logarithmic function will be observed in my inverse logarithmic function right now the next possible intensity value intensity transform is s is equal to c of r power gamma mm -hmm. gamma is the uh, curve uh, exponential value based on which the power of how these are changed is dependent, right? It this power law curves are fractional values of gamma and they map the narrow range of the dark input values to the wider range. So similar operation like the logarithmic we are also observing in my power also. And it is the opposite true for my uh, input levels. Higher values if we are observing for higher values then we see them to be compressed. right? So the similar operation is observed in logarithmic as well as my power systems. If we are observing the values for gamma equal to greater than 1, then they are having the exact opposite for which are having gamma is less than 1. Right? When C is equal to gamma is equal to 1, it reduces to my intensity transform. So C is equal to 1, gamma is equal to 1 means S is equal to R. So what is happening here is if C is equal to then this becomes an identity function. Now what are we basically using here the power transform and logarithm function to be enhancing the lower contrast pixel values to greater and higher contrast and we are trying to compress it. So if we combine all these intensity transforms in the form of a graph, we can see that if my input intensity values are given on right side on my x-axis and the output intensity values are given on s then the identity is uh, passing through the origin and the negative is like this they are two linear operations whereas when we go for logarithmic function then we see that this is my log function the exact opposite is my anti-log i have my uh, nth power uh, which is the opposite of the nth root. So this will be my intensity transform function. Now, there is another type of uh, intensity transform techniques which is called as my piecewise linear transformation functions. So what is happening here is if you are doing the uh, previous operations, we are considering each and every pixels and we are doing the same operation performed, right? So if I have pixel here, pixel here, pixel here, pixel here. So the same operation of the identity is performed, identity, 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 irrespective of whether the intensity transformation is required or not. So whereas here, what are we doing is we are doing a piecewise linear based on the applications and the required, we select few pixels and based on that, we do the intensity transform. The advantage of doing such functions is that it is a form of a that can be arbitrarily complex, right? It is though it is uh, arbitrarily complex, but it will have a better intensity transform. So we will get a kind of a uniform uh, function, right? So the major disadvantage is this specification requires some 
uh, only the input image is not required. We, just, we require a further information where the low contrast images, pixel values are there. All that little bit of more extra information is required when we are trying to go for piecewise linear transformations. Right. So there are two types. There are three types. That one is the contrast stretching. Right. What we have read it in the previous. Uh, intensity transform, contrast stretching and threshold length, right? So till now we have talked about like con uh, threshold length. So this is the contrast stretching. So contrast stretching means if I have, uh, if I'm uh, placing the R value, uh, which is on the X axis and S is of this sort, then what am I doing is I have a intensity or the contrast stretching graph to be of this sort. Now what is happening is if my R1 is S1, R2 is uh, S2, then it becomes a intensity transform function. Whereas if I'm considering this R1 equal to S1, uh, R2 and S1 equal to 0, S2, this becomes a thresholding function, right? So this becomes a thresholding function which is represented of this form, right? In general, what are we assuming is R1 is less than or equal to R2 and S1 is less than or equal to, right? So that kind of a function is a single valued and a monotonically increasing function. So we are considering a single valued and monotonically increasing value where that input image, input image is having a, a intensity value R and we have a single value S. Right. Say suppose we have the intensity value R1, then we have the input intensity value to be S1. Okay. So this S1 cannot be equal to S because we are considering a monotonically increasing value. Right. Now the same image, say this is the an example of the image where we are considering a low contrast image, which is we are considering it to be the original image. Okay. After we perform the contrast stretching, if this is the graph. So we have done this kind of an operation based on this R1 and R2 we have chosen based on that we are saying that the intensity values between 0 to R1 will follow this kind of a graph output graph and R1 to R2 they will follow this kind of a graph and R2 to uh, L minus 1 they will follow this kind of a graph right output graph. So based on that we have got this thresholding. Uh, this called as the contrast image output value. Whereas when we go for this thresholding, which is in the third graph here, third part of the graph, we see that either we will have such kind of a graph here, right? So this is my threshold value. All the intensity values below the threshold will become zero, right? So we will have either zero or the maximum value. Right. So we have got a binary image. So these are the different types of the intensity transform techniques. Right. The other is the contrast uh, le intensity level slicing. The other is the intensity level slicing. So here it is a part of similar to my thresholding. So what are we doing here? We are going to highlight only the specific range of intensity values. Say suppose I have 0 to L minus 1, then I am choosing through, through uh, threshold values which is A and B. In between those values, if R is between A and B, if R is between A and B, then my S is changing to be this value. Okay, restore, there is no operation performed, right? Or we can say directly it to be 0, right? So I'll have zero like this. This is my A, B. Instead of having one threshold value and creating a binary image, we are using through two threshold values where we are using uh, two thresholds and we are converting the uh, val intensity values which are outside those two uh, thresholds to be zero, right? So the other kind of intensity slicing that can happen is we are going to choose the same two thresholds here and if the intensity value is falling between 0 to first threshold value, then whatever is the original image, we are going to leave as it is. So this is the identity function, S is equal to R, right? If the intensity value is falling between A and B, then we are saying that intensity value R is changed to, say suppose, M. Okay, so this is my output intensity value. So all the intensity values which are falling between A and B, they are having the intensity value M. Okay, once the B threshold value is crossed, I am again going for my threshold uh, identity transform. So this is the kind of called as intensity level slicing, where I am choosing a specific band of intensity values and I am trying to 
uh, enhance it. So since we are dividing these intensity values, we are calling it to be intensity level slicing. So where actually we do use this kind of intensity level slicing is X-ray images. Okay, X-ray images when we take, we try to uh, enhance the bone fracture area and all. There we can use the X-ray images for those intensity level slicing. Satellite imagery uh, where we have to differentiate the masses of the water, uh, land, mass, uh, water, volcano. So all those parts can be differentiated using this intensity level slicing. Right. Now, one such application is used for in your angiogram, right? So, I have a blood vessel here where the uh, blood is flowing up and I have to do some operation. So, what am I doing this? If I perform a, a thresholding operation or if I mm, do my first kind of a intensity level slicing and second type of my intensity level slicing, I can see my difference in my images. So what is happening is if it is this kind of a vessel wherever the blood is flowing, that is having the value 1 which is the white color, right? Rest of the background is 0. Whereas when we go for the other set where the image is not uh, distorted there we see that uh, we are able to slightly see the other organs existing here right so this is more advantages when we go for the uh, medical image uh, enhancing so what is happening here is the original image is left as it is in my second case right this is my second case this is my first case in my second case my original image is left as it is so this is more advantages whereas here i will have only the binary so this is like used for analysis part but when we are going for real time applications operation time when we are trying to do we will use this kind of the intensity level slicing right the next type of the intensity transform is the bit planes bit plane slicing so what is happening here is we are having a image right so one two three four five six seven eight nine okay say suppose i'm having a uh, each bit, each intensity value, I am representing it by 4 bits. So, what is this? I have 0, 0, 0, 0001, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, uh, if I am representing by 4 bits, this is my uh, image, right? This is the same image I am representing in the form of a binary values. Now, what am I saying is, I can consider all the MSB bits, the first bits and form a matrix, which is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 1, right? Next, if I am considering the next bit, this one 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 zero zero so this is the next bit so on and so forth i can create four bits four bit matrices like this right so i'm using four bits to represent each intensity value then i can create four bit planes each matrix here is called as the bit plane so if i stack up all my bit planes in this form i can say that each bit can ha is having the information about the image. So when I am trying to reconstruct back to my original image from my bit planes to here, if the uh, <coughs> only the highest which is the MSP bit here, we are using eight bits. Say suppose in this example, then the MSP bit plane is the eighth bit plane. If we are using the only 8th bit plane to reconstruct back my original image, this is my original image, then using my 8th bit, which is the MSV value bit plane, I can get my original image of this sort. If I use the next bit plane, which is the 7th bit, I will get my image of this sort. So on, this is the 8th bit, this is the 7th bit, this is the 6th bit, this is the 5th bit, 4th bit, 3rd bit second bit and the first bit or the LSB bit, right? So, if you see clearly, the original image is very much obtained using my 8th bit or the MSB bit. 
very finite detail if i want to have to if i want to recreate using the finite data also then i can go till the fifth bit and i can easily construct back my original image right so this fourth bit third bit second bit and first bit which are having least amount of the data of the information can be removed right so by doing this kind of an operation we are able to compress the image and also we are trying to enhance the image in hand, uh, pixel values because these create these the fourth pixel third and the first pixel create the noise in my original image they are easily affected by noise so when i try to remove these pixels or these uh, bit values the rest of the pixel uh, uh, pixel intensity values uh, bits are having the high information they can be easily constructed and they are less affected by the noise so the image is having the high contrast image right so the same image same image which is the original image if i'm using 8th and 7th bit that means 8th and 7th bit uh, bit planes i'm using i'll get my reconstructed to be this if i'm using 8765 this is my reconstructed image so if you see here clearly my edges are much more clear when i use till this fifth bit plane whereas if i use the 87 bits right so what is happening here is the only the minute data what is the minute data is not that much clear right the overall image if you see it is clear but the minute data where are the edges they are little bit blur when we consider only the 87 here this is the 87 this is 876 and this is 8765 right so this is having more information the the edges are also much smoother so we go for the maximum number of bits but not totally so that we can achieve image compression as well as the uh, as well as the uh, enhancement technique right so this is the uh, book gonzalez books where you can further have the information on the intensity transform techniques right thank you like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.